Welcome, welcome. I have decided after these last few weeks that I actually enjoy these webcasts way more than you guys ever could because I have had so much fun. Whoops, I've been dressing and undressing mannequins and I've been leaving stuff around. I have had so much fun. And because I've just been on business all over this country, literally from coast to coast, it just gives me such a great opportunity to shop, 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 shop. <laughs> And I enjoy it. I just really enjoy it because there's so many good ideas out there. And every once in a while I say to myself, I wonder when I won't enjoy this anymore. But hey, why bother asking? Because for now, I love it. I just really, really enjoy it. There's so much that has gone into my head that's come out into these garments. I'll try my best to tell you designers and where they're from. And gosh, on so many levels, I just can't remember all of this stuff. But Anyway, it's really been fun pulling it all together. Basically, I'm just trying to do fabric pattern combinations and just really great easy ideas that you can do at home and take your sewing to a different level, I think, with really simple stuff. So where to start, where to start, where to start, I don't even know if I know. Um, but I will, let, oh, I know. We're going to have a giveaway tonight. Um, uh, one of our customers, you guys, you know, you're the best sent a couple DVDs. She had bought the black book and she'd had some DVDs that were in the black book. And so she went ahead and sent them back. She did not want her name revealed. She wanted to be anonymous. Oh, I just love your generosity. So there's two DVDs we're going to give away tonight. Basic pattern making, which is $50 and terrific t-shirts, which is $30. So listen to me here. Um, in order to be in the drawing we have a program and it will every email name that types in the code word that we give when we give it we'll do one like at 20 after and one at quarter tell um, we'll tell you the the word but in order to get ready what you have to do is you're going to type that word into the chat box now if you're already in the chat box no big deal just when we give that code word you'll type it into the chat box and you'll be entered into our drawing. If you're not logged in and in the chat box right now, you've got 20 minutes or so before we do this, and you just have to have a YouTube account, and then you have to be in the chat box, okay? Other than that, we're gonna open it up to everybody, and it's kind of like the lottery, except that's 1.3 billion, but this is priceless, right? There's, yeah. okay, all right, that was really bad. All right, so, um, what I did and what I've done really over and over and over again is I have a tendency now since we had that whole thing on core wardrobes and basic, you know, the whole Eileen Fisher thing when Laura made all the pieces. Every time I, I create, I try to think of, okay, what nine pieces will kind of correlate together and work as one. And I would strongly encourage you to do that. So thinking that first, thinking all what's new for fall, the trends, the ideas, all of that, bringing all of that together, that's what kind of led to the pieces I did. I think I did nine or maybe 10. But again, everything was with that in mind so that we could mix and match and things could all go together. So again, I'm gonna start with my craziest ones first because I just love them. And recognizing y'all may think I've lost my marbles, I'm good with that. Every time I go to Miami, I grew up in Miami, y'all know that, um, there's a couple shops that I just cannot miss. Um, one of them actually moved and I tracked the guy down and um, that's a good thing. But they're just really trendy. A lot of the goods are from South America, from Europe. They're just really different. He just, the guy who owns the store travels all over the world, really just finding great and unusual stuff. So. I love going there because there's just weird stuff and I love weird. I'm just sorry to tell you that. So this is what I found. This is the, one of the first things I found. This was almost, well, I, you know, look, everything's expensive. I've got Chanel, some stuff in here that's just all of it's expensive. So I don't know if that really matters. We won't even do pricing tonight. Um, but what this is, so, and I would, you know, you gotta look at this and try to guess the fabric because it just doesn't look anything like it. And, and I almost wish I would have made two and showed you before and after, but I didn't. So anyway, 
let me tell you the fabric and, and for those of you at your computer maybe you could pull it up this is fabric 2014 it's a it's a beautiful cotton and it's got all pretty colors in it it's just really beautiful whenever I see cotton and woven I'm sorry knit and woven mixed together I'm automatically drawn to it because because I just really really like it I don't know why I just really like the blending of the two so the pattern is 113 which is Sunny's top and so what I did is I cut this out of the the, the black base is the black rayon knit it's 509 and then I just cut the pieces just like Sunny's top just like you know the they're just overlaid and they're they're angled they're just like Sunny's top originally all right so when I did a woven keep in mind as you it's not going to go all the way across to a knit it's too small so when you're sewing the layers 113 has layers all over it when you're sewing those layers on top of something else um, it's not going to stretch all the way across because the woven won't stretch to the knit so what I did is I I made breaks in the woven so just as you're going from side to side on these layers just cut them in pieces and I cut them about one inch wide and the reason I knew I liked one inch wide is because the one in the store that was done like this I, I unraveled it and looked at it to know that it was one inch wide so you're just gonna sew all these on you're gonna cut them up and then you're gonna throw it in the washer and throw it in the dryer and this is what you get and I absolutely love it I know y'all may have thought I've lost my marbles but I just think it is just the coolest thing ever and just start whenever I do something like this I just really start to think okay what about colors what about you know what could I blend it with just so many different effects you can really create simply with the striped or the you know made of strips as far as the fabric goes and then washed to create a different effect all right so that's 113 the fabrics are 2014 the pattern is 113 the fabrics are 2014 and 509 the black rayon knit all right so with that girls gotta have a pair of leggings leggings and hip leggings like you know and it's amazing what takes regular leggings to designer leggings it's about two hundred dollars and ready to wear but us as home sewers it's a can of paint so Alice and Olivier I was in Saks and they had all these really cool painted leggings so I got to thinking I can paint especially as bad as they were painted I thought I can do that and so what I did is I took my stretch denim which is 1598 and I washed it coca-cola you guys have heard me talk about the coca-cola thing so washing coca-cola I did it a couple times because I love soft leggings I just really like it when they're just really really soft like pajamas and these are cotton so there's no reason they can't get that way they just sometimes got some finishes on them right before you start so then what I did is I traced I just took um, the pattern and I took my chalk and I chalked around each piece so I did front be sure that you do a back don't do two of the same because you can't make a pair of pants out of two of the same so be sure that once you trace it you turn it over and trace the mirror image so that you don't I think you get that all right so then you can just go and buy anywhere spray paint fabric spray paint so it is uh, all kinds of colors uh, and I saw in the store I saw hot pink I didn't want anything that bizarre which is hard probably for y'all to believe since I just really like this top here but I really wanted it to be silver I had this outfit also I've got threads everywhere that I was matching it with and this has silver in it so I wanted those two to go together now remember last week um, I had made my black jeans with the twisted leg and so those were black denim and I decided I wanted the navy leggings so six of one half a dozen another because they all jeans go with everything so it doesn't even matter what you do up top jeans just will go with everything you do but anyway here's a leg I did a couple extra pieces so you can see and the pair I saw at Saks was heavy at the bottom and then just kind of sprinkled lighter as it can kind of went up it was really fun to spray this stuff because you recognize that you can't screw it up 
I don't know if I'm the best painter in the world, but this was just really fun. Um, the reason I did even draw it is so that I could get some ideas to get the bottoms somewhat the same and then let it graduate as it kind of went up into the garment. So with your fabric spray paint, I don't know that you could use regular paint. I didn't try that. I went for the fabric paint. It's like a whole $4 a can or something like that. And you just spray, 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 and then you let it dry, and then you wait to wash it, um, they said 72 hours. So just read the directions on the can and have fun with this. Just there's so many awesome, cute little leggings out there. This is one of many, 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 but I just love my silver leggings. Just love them. I know I will wear them out this fall. And I just brought a cute little new pair of boots, so can't wait to get all that. So the, again, the fabric on the leggings, the pattern is 1519 and the fabric's 1598. Okay. Where did you buy the paint? I just went to a craft store. Any craft store, just ask them for your, so, you know, your fabric paint. The particular craft store I went to said it was in the um, wearable art section. So just maybe look wearable art. If you're in a smaller town, you don't have craft stores, just Google. They'll mail it to you. And again, you can use paint it on, but I didn't want it. I wanted the blobs. I wanted speckles. I wanted to do it light up here. And, you know, it looks like a, um, a border print to me, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to create my own border print. So that was really fun. All right. So then I saw, I've seen quite a few. Let's have a giveaway. Do we have time? Are we ready for a giveaway? Yeah, let's do a giveaway. And we'll do the um, basic pattern making first. All right, so we're ready for the code word. All right, the code word is donation. Just because our nice customer, exactly what she did, our code word is donation. Doesn't matter if it's caps or small, it's D-O-N-A-T-I-O-N. The system, like I said, will pick everybody up who types in that word. So you just type it in and you're entered, okay? Okay, all right, we'll give it a few minutes to do that. So then, this is one of our new patterns. This is 418, Fisher's Pleated Blouse. Absolutely love this. I've gotten all kinds of wonderful comments, how many of you, how many you've made. Um, I don't know if I should or should not brag on Annette Wright. Annette Wright was entered a pattern review. I think it's pattern review, you guys. I hope I don't mess all this up and a contest into doing like a cluster wardrobe and part of her cluster, she had so many pieces and, um, you know, had purposes and reasons and stuff, had rules she had to follow. But one of her tops that she used was 418 and I just love it. I loved her. Congratulations to Annette. I mean, it really looked incredible. She did a wonderful job and we're just really proud that she would make silhouette patterns proud. Thank you. All right, so this, what I did is this is an ITY knit. Again, I love the, the knit and the woven combination. So this is a woven pattern, and I decided I wanted to try it in a knit. So the body, I didn't make any changes. Same size and everything, because it has that pleat, and you can't make it smaller. Otherwise, the pleat won't pleat. It'll pull. So all I did with this was I took the knit armhole and put a knit sleeve on it. So when you have it on, it's the body is close. I mean, it's full, not full, but shaped. And then the sleeves are, are knit and it's beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful on. I just, you know, if I were a quicker changer, I would go in and keep changing, but we're not gonna do that. So also then I saw several versions of Fisher's blouse and it's out there by numerous manufacturers where across the neckline where the original pattern has just the, the neck binding stopping here and there's a little open V several of these options went across. So it just formed a little V before the pleat, and I really like that. But I went ahead and made a little tie because one that I saw had a little tie on it and I just really liked it. So you don't have to tie it, but I really like the look. And then if you want, you can tie it in a bow. And what I did is I took the neck facing, just like it is, I just cut it twice as long. So then it, once it was twice as long, I just, Fold it in half, sewed it right on just the same, except I just kept stitching so that it made this little two-sided band. And now I can fold it, I can open it, I can tie it, I can leave it, I can do whatever I want. 
You could even leave it open and just kind of let both sides stay like that. And either way, like I said, I just really liked it. The possibilities of using a contrasting band, so many options, just so many options. But you all know it goes with my leggings. Or I could wear it with my jeans. I could do either one. It's all good. Okay. That fabric is brand new. We just put it up. The pattern's 418 and the fabric's 2064. Sorry, I got to get my stuff I dropped. I have little samples for you all. 2064 is that um, fabric. Okay. Questions. Do we have a winner? We have a winner. And the, the program will pick up randomly a winner. And that person is. All right, we'll keep going and then the winner will come up. All right. It did what? Okay. So that didn't work. <laughs> so that means we're going to try it again. Just have them type in donation again. Okay. Just so try this again. We're going to type in donation. Even if you entered it once, if you'll enter it again. Just type in the word donation, and we're going to see if the program doesn't pick it up. So something happened, and it didn't work. So we're going to try it again. So the word is donation. If you'll type that in, let's see what happens. Okay? All right. Is that all good, guys? It might, it might not work. That's okay. If it doesn't work this week, you guys, we will do it next week. We'll, we'll, or two weeks. We'll make sure it's right. We'll get it down. We will give away these videos, whether it's tonight, next week, or the week after. But we'll figure out a way. Okay. So now, all right, I played and I continued playing. Oh, the neck piece I have on. Love this. All I did, a couple changes. Um is 113 same pattern is what this is I just put the neck piece on sewed it on I didn't change the neck here at all um, sew it on and then just cut around I just used a zipper foot put your needle all the way to the you know to where you're stitching right close to the beads and then you just cut away the extra netting and it's just pretty cool I just love it I really like this shirt but let me tell you one other thing I did so you know I don't know if you've ever noticed this but if you go to Chanel's website I don't know how often you go to Chanel's website. You can't actually see what's in the store. You can't look up a garment. You can't do any of that. Now, if Chanel's at Saks or Neiman's or another location, you can. But Chanel, what is in the store at Chanel is not on a website. So that's okay with me. I'll go to the store. So I did go to the store. And a lot of times with Chanel, I just never find anything I like. And oh my gosh. Something, something hit Chanel. I liked everything in there. So I'm going to show you some stuff that's in there and what I did with it and how I changed it. I'll tell you what I saw and then what I got. So on this top, and I know you may not be able to see it, but there's little, um, I don't know what you want to call it. Like, uh, you're not going to be able to see it. But anyway, yeah, you can't, just can't see it. It's too, it's too low down and it's dark. But anyway, they're like little, um, well, they're additions. I'm going to show you how to do them. But it's almost like a little peplum, but it's low. And it's just an asymmetrical little peplum that is just cute, cute, cute. They had it on a sweater. I thought it doesn't matter what it's on. You can do it on anything. Can I, do I have the ability to draw? And then do you have 195? Okay. So we're going to take our base pieces which are 195 or 113. I used 113 because it was already lowered. It was already lengthened. We have a winner. All right, Terry Walker has won basic pattern making. All right, so Terry, what I need you to do is if you'll email me Peggy at silhouettepatterns.com, let's just say that you won the basic pattern making we will ship that to you. If you've ordered from us, we have your order. If you haven't ordered from us, just put your address and we'll make sure we'll, we ship it out tomorrow. Congratulations. And for those of you who didn't win, we're gonna give another way, another one away here a little bit later, the t-shirt DVD, okay? All right, so 
we're going to I'm going to show you how to do these and I'm going to tell you I've got, I wore this shirt the other day and just every place I went everyone just was just very complimentary I mean people didn't know I said they just said that is a cool little shirt and it is just a fun little shirt so very easy to do again just kind of different and interesting and I'd really play with it and keep in mind that some people say to me well you're adding at the hips I'm telling you you add at the hips and it makes your hips look smaller so don't think that you're going to make yourself look heavier it's actually just the opposite you're going to make yourself look thinner that's the goal all right all right so if we can get that pattern 195 up there all right now what you're going to do um now you're going to i don't have enough room in the bottom but just know that you're going to kind of think that this is the whole length what you're going to do and what i did is I based it on the front, so I started adding right there below the French dart. And because I don't have the paper to the side, I'm going to show you in the back. So kind of the same place on the back, you're going to just literally cut out It's let me switch something. Hold yeah, on. sorry you guys. I think I clicked something that I shouldn't have. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So the same place you're going to do the same to the front and the back. You go out, I went out nine inches, and down, oh, you know, I keep clicking that button, Brad, I'm sorry. There's a little thing on here, you guys, I keep clicking. I'm holding on to the pen, I keep clicking it, there we go. So come out nine inches, out nine inches, front and back, and then come down to the hem. Now on 113, what I did is I added two inches to the bottom, add to the bottom, both front and back, you're gonna come out nine inches, front and back, same place, but do it at the right at the bottom of the dart so that it doesn't interfere with the dart and do it in both front and back. So once you do it here, figure out how many inches you are from the bottom after you've added the two inches and then do it at the same place at the back. Then when you sew, you're gonna start up here, you're gonna sew, 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 and you actually sew, you turn the corner and you sew this way. Then when you hem it, this portion becomes hemmed with the hem because it'll fall down and it makes like thank you you guys it makes like a little asymmetric skirt over at the sides i just love it i think it's so cute it was on a top at chanel and i tried it on and i mean it's just so simple and just way too cute so hopefully you'll like it again i did the beads at the top and the i'm going to call it the chanel bottom at the sides and i just really like that then also when I was at Chanel, I saw a skirt and I fell in love with a skirt. Um, it was printed, but printed didn't really work into what I was doing. So I decided I wanted to do it solid. And this skirt is just a piece of fabric. It's just a rectangle, no pattern. You can just get a rectangle and I'll tell you how to figure it out and how to do it. So the the fabric here is 2059. And the reason I'm giving you the fabric early on is I want you to look at that fabric. If you if you can, if not, I'll describe it. But it is a it's a lace. It's a um, knit lace. It's beautiful. It's a cotton lace. So you can see through it, which this fabric at Chanel was the same way. Very light, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna wear it like with tights underneath with a pair of boots you're going to just layer it over tights. So it's really just going to be the, or uh, over leggings, either one, doesn't matter. But it's going to be the effect that shows. And this skirt is so cool. So let me describe it to you. So what I did is I, I did a little sample, because like I said, if I turned that skirt inside out, you can't even see it all. Um, so you're going to take the measurement of your hips. And let's just use a number, we'll say 40. You're going to one and a half that, so that means you're gonna do it 60 inches wide. So the fabric is wider than 60, so you only need a yard of fabric because it's wider than 60 inches, so you're gonna put the width going all the way around. Unless, what I did is I wanted to use the selvage as the hem. I didn't hem the, the skirt at all because it's got a really pretty selvage. So I put the 60, I used two yards, and then I cut off the top. So I used two yards because I love the selvage and I didn't want to hem the skirt. I wanted it to look like it was knitted, which it does. 
And then what I did is I only wanted it to be 24 inches in length. I just wanted mine to be knee length for me. That's again for me. Because um, I don't want it to be long, long. The longer the skirt, the shorter you look. So knee length works really well. They're not going to see anything anyway. You could even do it a little shorter because again, you've got leggings or tights underneath and they're not going to be able to see anything. So it's just a really cute look. It ties in with my jacket. It ties in with just everything. I can wear it with with all of my different parts, which is really exciting. So what they did is they turned over the top portion and they just put elastic, no big deal. But then what they did is it was a shearing, but instead of like typically doing a shearing, which you do like with elastic in the bobbin and you sew it along, the negative of that shearing is often it pops, it breaks, it pulls, it's not really sturdy. So I like this a whole lot. And what they did is they, took elastic i'm sure they theirs was you know mine mine i just took my two inch wide elastic and i cut five pieces so each of them was maybe like three eighths inches wide so i just cut my two inch wide into strips and then you're going to sew these strips into the skirt and it, so step one is you hem the top and you put a one inch wide elastic at the top then and i did it at two inch intervals i did five rows so what that does is it put it puts it just below the hip line by the time you finish if most of us are seven to nine inches you could do just four rows doesn't make a difference but you're going to cut the elastic to your hip measurement now remember the fabric is one and a half times you cut the elastic to whatever your hip measures and then you just pull the elastic and you sew it in rows Leave the skirt flat. Don't sew it in a circle, it's way too hard. So finish the top, the waist, and then just do five rows, four or five, and do them two inches apart. And you get this adorable little easing, and then you just do the center back seam. And you put it together, make sure everything aligns up, and sew the bottom. The hem's already finished because it's the selvage, and the top has been turned over and finished as well. And that's it. It's a really quick, super duper skirt. The skirt was thousands of dollars. And I am going to tell you, this is so cute on. I wish, wish, wish those of you going to Seattle this weekend, I'm going to be at quality. So I'll bring the skirt. You can see it firsthand. It's adorable. And like I said, it's a little bit lacy. You can see through, but it's not a big deal. So it's just a total win-win on fabric pattern combination to me. All right. Any questions on that? May we use close-ups, bottom of your skirt? Yeah, let's try to do some close-ups, can we guys? I'm gonna move this just for a second. We've got so much packed in this room. Bottom of my top, I think is what you're talking about. So I'm gonna turn like this, and we wanna get this portion down there. And then can we zoom in at all a little bit? Hang on, we've got wires and cords and everything else. Is that good? Okay, so, so you got a little one like that. So you've got these little things on the side. I just love them. Okay, then can we get into here? Can you get a close-up on that at all? That's okay. That's as close as we can get. But this will really give you a good example. This is, this is exactly why I did a, a little samples. That's what the front looks like and that's what the inside. It's just black on black, the skirt is. So you'll have these rows. They're two inches apart. I just did kind of a little mini sample. Cute, cute? Okay. How are we? Is that good for questions? Okay. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, now keep in mind that what I kept in mind when I was making my group is I already had my bomber jacket. I had that that went with my jeans and I put in 125. So the bomber jacket is 927. I put in 125. I did it out of a black rain on knit, but I've already had it. I use it all the time. A great, it's like a turtleneck. Just a, if you have a turtleneck, that's what works um, because that can go underneath my cape it can go under my jacket. It can go under all of that. It just works really, really well. 
So a lightweight, solid turtleneck will really be a great key. Can you show us the bottom of that Chanel top? I'm not quite getting it. Well, just, um, I don't, you'll definitely not get it by looking at the top. <laughs> but let me just explain that when you just, from the side seams of the pattern, both the front and the back, go straight out, you're going to form like a rectangle. Go straight out nine inches, then down to the hem. That's it. What's the width of the elastic in the skirt? I did, I took my two inch wide piece and I divided it into five. So it's about three eighths of an inch. Each, each strand is about three eighths of an inch. Okay, and that's what's sewn on the skirt. What is the number of the skirt you just described? The black skirt. All right, you guys, I think you're doing too many things at once. I got a lot going on. I'm I mean, I know there's a lot going, but there wasn't a pattern. Remember I said you just started with a square piece of fabric. And if you just watch the replay afterwards, I gave how to figure out and how to turn it and all that kind of stuff. Okay? All right, good, good, good. And I know there's lots going on. And so if you're listening, then you think you missed the next part. But it's all here where you can just replay it and watch it again. Okay? Okay. Because I've got two things left, I want to talk about the jacket and I want to talk about the cape. Um, fur, faux, real, doesn't matter what you decide to do, it's your call, but it's really popular. Again, it's winter time, it's al always really popular. I have this jacket I want you to look at. Um, this is a jacket by Alice and Olivier. And that jacket is that fabric. So this fabric is 1934. It's a faux, um, I mean, it's a little lighter in that picture, but this is the same fur. Like I literally went to the store and felt it. It's the same color, same everything. It, it's, it looks very orange in that, and it looks more red in this, but it's the same thing. All right, so the cool thing is, see how they made, you know, I was a little worried about making a jacket out of it because I thought, well, it'd be too, like, um, like too round you know I just <laughs> I just love this jacket absolutely just love it I I just I, but it took seeing that jacket and I actually tried that jacket on the thin the fur for the some because many of you have bought it is very very thin so it's not bulky at all I was really really surprised putting this jacket on how beautiful the jacket is so what I did I'm gonna just kind of pull it up a little bit. I put a black piping in there because I wanted just to have a little bit of, you know, I wanted to pull it together with my black jeans, um, a black skirt, black pants, and I want to have just a little bit of, I don't know, kind of pulling together. We have black piping now. So the, the fur is, is um, 1934. The piping is 2062. And we've even got these little closures. Those are 2063, those are brand new. But anyway, I did make 1950 double-breasted. So I'm gonna show you how to do that also. Just because I want, I had seen another jacket, it was by um, Etro, E-T-R-O, which is a high-end line also. They're an Italian company, family company. They've been around for a long time. And they had a jacket that was Max's jacket that was double breasted, wrapped exactly like this. So I kind of took the fur, the combination, and the other etro, and I kind of combined them together. And I, it, I just love it. I just really, really like it. And I can't wait to wear it. I haven't worn it yet. But all you want to do is just stand there and kind of rub it. It's just really, it's really soft. All right, let me, um, I need to get that drawing pad if you don't mind. And if I could just get a blank sheet then I will draw that, uh, just how to make a double breasted. It's very simple to do and it's really a lot of fun. Okay, so Max's jacket is a, did I do it again? Sorry, I got it. Max's jacket is a shawl collar and the shawl collar kind of Shell collar kind of comes down like that. No, it's still making me do lines. Can you do it again? Okay, thanks. The shell collar. There we go. Okay, it's freehand. I thought, I'm sorry. 
For a while, it was making me do straight lines, but now it's freehand. So shawl collar from the collar part back here, but for the style on the front, kind of comes around like this. I'll finish drawing it here in just a minute. Then it has the shawl collar, then it has a little bit of the thing and curves around like so, okay? It's a terrible drawing, but you'll get the idea. So what you want to do to do double breast is don't do anything up here, then all of a sudden just start to go out here and then curve back in. Now, how much you add is completely up to you. Don't add more than four inches, the widest part of this section right here. I added three. So what I knew that would do is it would wrap, but not all the way to the next princess seam. It would just wrap halfway in between and just have a little bit of a wrap to it. And that's exactly what I got here. So you can see, here's the princess seam. The wrap is over here. It's not all the way to the princess seam but it does have a wrap to it. You can see typically that would be center front. This jacket is beautiful. I mean, it's just so pretty. That Alice and Olivier jacket, we're not even going to talk prices. It's ridiculous. The prices are just so expensive. But you know what? That's why we sew. Or that's why I sew. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> that's definitely why I sew. So a little black piping curved it until the bottom. And there we have it. Very easy to do, a little tiny change, but big impact and a lot different. Same pattern. And I know many of you have made 1950. Try this little alternative. It's just perfect for fall. It's really nice. All right, should we have another giveaway? All right, let's have another giveaway. All right, so the code word, we're gonna do it again. And for those of you who are already in the chat, or those of you who are not in the chat, in order to win, you have to be in the chat, which means you have to have an account with YouTube. You don't email me. You don't do it anywhere else. You just do it in that chat box. And this code word is going to be education. Education, again, doesn't matter if it's caps or small letter. Education, E-D-U-C-A-T-I-O-N. Education. It's going to educate. And you're going to win the terrific t-shirts. Okay. And we'll wait for a little while and we'll see how you do. All right, so let me talk about this other cape here while you all are winning. Or maybe we do have too many things going on. Maybe I should let them. <laughs> okay. Just keep talking. All you have to do is type the word. I guess it doesn't take that long, right? Okay. So, <laughs> um, you know, one thing that is just really big for fall is hoodies and hoodies. But another thing right alongside of it is capes, right alongside of it is plaids. So I saw a cape and I think it was St. John, I can't remember, and you also know St. John is so high priced, I can't remember who it was, but it was a hoodie in a cape and a plaid. I thought, oh my gosh, that's like so right on, trend, it's so current, it's so fresh. So I thought we can do that. So I took pattern number 96. It's called BJ's Cape. And if you look at the cape itself, it has a zipper down the front. It has pop. It has all of that. Don't, we don't need all that. I actually put the pattern together, put the front to the side. I cut it as one. I put the center front on the fold. In doing that, you have no plaids to match at all. It has a cape, so I added a cape. We got these beautiful silver, um, they're silver cord stops. They're plastic, but they're adorable, these little silver cord stops. And then the only thing I did was I put a little leather button. We have these little leather buttons and I put the little leather button right where the pattern is marked, button, and that kind of holds the cape in place. And I just love this. I think again, it's so, it's just current, it's fresh. Talk about easy to sew. It is just fun. It is great with my black jeans, with my leggings. If I wanna put my little um, turtleneck underneath, my little 125 to kind of keep me warm, or a shell, or I could even put the top I have on because you wouldn't see any of this underneath. It would just work on so many levels. So a great cape I think is definitely a plus for fall. When it's in plaid, you don't have to match any of those plaids, just put the pieces together, cut them all as one. I didn't put pockets on this one. I just really pared it down and really simplified it. 
So the pattern itself is 96. The fabric here is 1988. I love it. I don't know if you can see the color. It's a beautiful, just a real deep, rich green and black. The little, um, the little cord stops are 2061. And then we have this Soutache cordy even. We got everything. We got all this stuff for you now. We're getting more and more stuff, so you can just get it all at one time and put it in your basket. And the Soutache cording is $13.99. That way I will not get as many emails and say, what number is this? What number is this? What number is this? What number is this? All right. Do we have a winner? We have a winner. Yay. Okay. D. Meinke. M-E-I-N-K-E has won the giveaway. Congratulations, you guys. D, don't know first name. Diane could be, we could guess all night. But anyway, um, if you'll shoot me an email, Peggy at SilhouettePatterns.com and tell me that you won the t-shirt DVD. We'll make sure that gets mailed out tomorrow. Again, if you have ordered from us, just say, you know, just give me a city and state and we'll pick it up in our system. But if you have not, if you'll give me full address, zip code, everything, that would be great. Okay. All right. How much fun is all this, you guys? I am telling you, my brain has just been going crazy. I've had so much fun. And clearly when you're sewing a whole bunch, I've really found the key is a, a, just a couple hours at night when I think I'm just really tired and I don't really want to go to bed because I don't want to. I just have come and sewn and it's really, really, really been a lot of fun. I have definitely from being, I don't even remember where I've been, but I've been in California. I know I went to Chicago. I know I was in Miami. I don't remember where else I've been, but every place I just find a, a great mall and I go for it. All right. I got to tell you about our new little thing that I just think is wonderful. You all know Jeannie. Jeannie's um, my little girl, my little model on Fit to Stitch. Okay, so she had open heart surgery. Y'all remember that. Or you may not. But anyway, she had open heart surgery. And she's young. So <laughs> when she went to rehab, everybody in the rehab is, you know, twice her age. And she's just out doing everybody because she's young, which is good. That's the good news. So we learned something in that process because um, this is um, aspirin. I, I think many of you may know this. But aspirin, let me get my glasses so I can kind of read this. And cardiologists back this, that chewing aspirin at the first sign of a heart attack can save a life. So we decided there's a little company in Dallas who sells these little aspirin pods. So this is a little heart and we'll take a picture of it and we'll put it up on the website. We don't have them up yet, but we'll put them up for tomorrow. And it is a little holder. It opens up. And it's a keychain, so you can put it right on your, with your keys. Like all we need is to make our keys any bulkier, right? But you just want to put it right on your keys. It's not even about you. It's about if you're somewhere and you see somebody who is having signs of a heart attack, which are pain in the left arm, upper chest, kind of clenching, kind of numbness in the fingers. You guys can read all those signs. But anyway, this opens up, put a little aspirin in there and close it up. And for me, I haven't had any of those signs yet, but I know from my sweetheart, my boyfriend, he has, he's had a TIA. So this is really, I think can be a lifesaver. So I was really on board with this and really feel like it may not be us, but it may be so many of our loved ones that are around. So these little aspirin pods, I want you to, I wanted to just tell you about them and we will, like I said, have them in our site. We'll just put a link on the very front page. It'll just take you to, I don't know where we're even going to put them, but we'll figure it out. All right. Okay. So at least while you're sewing, you'll be safe and secure and everything will be all good. What is the fabric of the cape? Oh, it's a hundred percent cotton. Is that what you mean? Not the number. Yeah. The cape. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent cotton. Yeah. It's really beautiful. It's light. So you can layer. I've always heard and I've done it, but I've always heard that light layers are the best way to stay warm, not heavy, thick one layer. So that's my goal this winter. I'm going to stay 90 degrees all winter long by layering light layers. All right, what other questions do we have? We just have a few minutes left. I got through everything. I think this is my favorite. I don't know. No, I can't say that. I like them all. 
I just really like them all. I like my hippie stuff. Some of, we were in a workshop the other day. We had a workshop here in Dallas, and we were talking about if we were hippies or not. And even if we weren't hippies in the 70s, are we hippies now? And I think a lot of us qualified for being hippies just because we didn't like rules. We liked doing it our way. So we could have all been hippies in the day. Did you line the cape? I did not. It's just one layer. The back of this fabric is pretty much the same as the front. So you could line it, I guess, if you just wanted it to be heavier. But because I knew I was going to layer it, I wanted that cape to be really nice and light. That's all. And, and I put a cape on it. Simpl I mean, a hood. It has a hood in the pattern, but I put for sure put a hood on it because I remember we were in Portland. My, my son goes to school at Portland State. And everybody, we were all there and we we're walking around at night and it starts to rain. And all of my sons, all four of them, all they did was whip their little hoodie up and it was no big deal because they all had something to cover their head. I was the only one getting drenched. So I thought, you know what, I need to put more hoodies on my stuff because they just sit back there. If you don't use them, no big deal, but you can pull them up and use them if you need them. And I just thought that was a pretty good idea. Okay, I might have missed it, but did she say the red furry fabric was on the site for sale? It is the red furry fabric, if you missed it, is fabric 1934. 1934. Okay. All right. What else, you guys? I've taught you everything I know. Yep. It's on page eight. It's on page eight. Thank you. I've taught you everything I've known, and I'm telling you, I've been all over it. This is the greatest, latest. How'd you fasten the underpiece on Max's jacket? I didn't. You could, if you wanted to, put a button, but I didn't. You don't really need to. It's just not, it's so light. The fur is so light that when you lap it, I put the closures over here, it just stayed there. So I actually didn't put an, a closure on the underlayer. You could. You could easily put a buttonhole and then put a button and button it to the inside if you wanted to. But it also doesn't lap that much. It's only a three inch overlap. It's not, you know, considerably that much. Usually there's a four, even four and a half inch when you need to, but it stays in place. I might find that when I wear it, it might fall down. I may not like it, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. Did you lengthen the cape at all? The cape being this cape? No. I cut this exactly as the pattern. I mean, minus I put the center front on the fold. I combined these two pieces together. I just overlapped them. There's a seam in there, but I didn't change the length. I did that just like it was. And it's kind of really kind of fun on here because you can use the plaids to align the bottom and align the sleeves and front to back and just really fun. What is planned for next show? You mean next webcast? This isn't a show, you guys. This is fun. A show means I have to work. Um, no, next week, we're, or two weeks from now, I'm sorry, it'll be the POM for uh, November. November's POM. Yep. Was the fur jacket lined? The pattern is lined. I did not line this. And the reason I did not line it is because the back of faux fur, if you've seen faux fur or have any, or this one, I don't know if it's all faux fur, but most of it is. This has a really nice texture layer. It's it's kind of slippery. I just didn't think it needed a lining. And I like the idea of having it unlined. I'm not sure why. What's well, it about work? Because I can, you know, you can do lining. I think it's just as fast to line as it is to not line. Because you got to finish the seams. you got to do all that. So I did not line it. <gasps> All right, you guys, if we stop now, we have eight minutes of sewing time. Wow, thanks for another great program. Thank you all. I'm telling you, I love, look at all these clothes I've got. They're all finished. They're all, I love them all. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to wear them. You'll see them all because as we're doing different things over the next couple months, I'll wear them. Did you use your regular size leggings in the denim? This denim, it has, it has two-way stretch, but the one way is stronger than the other direction, so I went up a couple sizes. I just went up a couple sizes because I knew that they would look straight at the bottom, and if I gave myself a little more hip room, um, it, they would be a little more easier to move in. And you can always go down. If they were too big, they all, I could always go down. They were ended up being perfect. But I went up a couple sizes. Just be aware. Okay? All right. When and where were you in California? I was at, it's really hard for me to remember when, but it was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I went to 
um, I flew to San Jose and I went to Kanata College. Kanata College is in Redwood City and they, the college was putting on a program and asked me to be a speaker. So I was only there for two hours. <laughs> I flew in for the two hours and then flew back. But before I flew back, guess what I did? You got it right. I went shopping. <laughs> okay. So there's some little places I know in San Jose area that are great for shopping and I hit them all. So um, if the you will be close to California s soon too. You will be or <laughs> what's this one? Um, if the rectangular skirt is sixty for a forty hip, what about other hip sizes? It's just a one to one and a half. So whatever your hip size is, I was using forty as an example. Half of that is twenty, so add the twenty to the forty and do sixty. So one to one and a half is pretty standard for how much fullness you use in a skirt and gathering, you know, whenever you're wondering how much do I add for gathers, one to one and a half. So if you're a 50 inch hip, you would take half of that, which is 25, and then you'd need 75 inches. So that's two yards. I mean, I would do 72 close enough, and then two yards would make your skirt. And then again, the width was longer than I wanted the skirt to be, and so I just cut it off from the non selvage side that I wanted the hem to be. I'm going to end up taking this off this little lady here. Excuse me, little lady, for undressing her in front of everybody. We're going to put her little cape back on so she's not completely naked. And I'll show you where... Okay, so what you want to see is the shape of the skirt, if you can, because when you have it on, Oh my gosh, it just, it's so beautiful. It just slightly cups in underneath. And you can see it's got just a little bit of fullness at the bottom. And that's the selvage. The selvage is so pretty with this fabric. So you can see my little gather, you know, the little layers all the way through. There's five, one, two, three, four, five. I put them every two inches apart. And it's almost like a little tulip skirt because you want to space the two inches to where it goes below your your butt. Because the last two inches will actually bring the skirt in a little bit under your butt. And I don't care what size your butt is, it's really flattering to do that. So that's why I'm sure when I looked at the Chanel skirt and looked at where they were and why were they down to that, because you don't want to stop at the widest part. You want to go down a couple more and it brings it in. And it's just cute, cute, cute. I mean, I love this, love this skirt, all right? All right, you guys, you've got plenty of ideas, hopefully, and we're gonna save thousands of dollars. This skirt alone, I think to make it, if it took two yards, will cost you a whole $50, and to buy it will cost you 3,000. Hmm, which should I do? By the way, it took me about an hour to make this skirt. All right, you can do this. How did you finish the seams on the fur jacket? Um, I, on the inside, I surged them. The fur surged beautifully. So I just surged them all on the inside. And then of course it has a facing on the front. Ah, love that jacket. All right, we're good. Okay, if we stop now, you only have three minutes to go So, <laughs> all right? But mainly, most of all, we wanna tell you all happy sewing. Um, very much appreciate that you all are always here and always watching we're growing like crazy you're telling your friends thank you thank you thank you we have some really exciting surprises in store for you on pbs and things we're doing we'll keep you all updated all right so from silhouette patterns happy sewing good night see you in two weeks